Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson here with me, Anna English on English Like a Native. And I'll just turn my sound off, make sure my phone is off so we can concentrate on today's class. So we're here today at 11 a.m., a little bit earlier than normal. And today we're doing something a little bit different. We're checking what's hot off the press. Now, if you watched my recent video, Hot Idioms, then you'll know that hot off the press means news just in. So it's fresh news. So what we're doing today is learning some advanced vocabulary by looking at some extracts from the news. So this is a chance to hear some advanced vocabulary spoken in um, uh, journalism. So we're looking at journalism, newspaper articles. So this will be a little bit more technical, a little bit more advanced than what we're used to working with. If you do find it difficult, don't worry. Just stick with it. Immersing yourself into a higher level than you're used to is a great way to advance quite quickly. So I would encourage you to stay with us uh, if nothing else, you will learn a handful of advanced words because I will pick out some particular words and give you the meanings for those words. So even if you find this tough, do stick with it. Okay, so lots of you joining me already. It's lovely to see you. If you are new here, please do press the subscribe button and the bell notification button so you don't miss any future uploads, any future live lessons. And do give this video a thumb up. All right, so let's jump straight into those notes. Here we go. Let me bring you back. Could you hear me when the notes were on? I'm not sure if you could. Let me try that again. Okay, let me go over to them technically. Technical issues and I'm not quite sure why. So, um, just bear with me one second. Why is that not saving like that? Let me try that one and let me try one more time. Can you hear me now? Fantastic. Woohoo. Yes, we are on. Brilliant. Okay. Whew, that was stressful. So the first article we're looking at is a very short extract from an article which is all about the war on plastic straws. So what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to read it once through without stopping. Then I will pick out the vocabulary, which I feel you may not be familiar with. I will go back and read it again once you're familiar with that vocabulary. If there's anything you don't understand, please do write it in the notes. And if I can help you with it, I will do. All right, here we go. So, war on plastic straws. McDonald's shareholders have rejected a proposal asking the firm to report on its use of plastic straws the latest part of a campaign pressing the firm to ban the items. The idea, which was backed by activist group Some of Us, won less than 8% of the vote at the company's annual meeting. McDonald's has recommended against the measure, saying it was unnecessary and redundant. Some of Us said the vote was not surprising some of us has been pressing McDonald's to end its use. And I think there should be an of there to end its use of plastic straws due to the impact of the environment on the environment and wildlife. An online petition on the issue has attracted nearly 500,000 signatures. The proposal argued that McDonald's could face a customer, a consumer backlash on environmental grounds. Okay, so that's the extract. Now, I've picked out a handful of words here for us. 
So the first one is the word activist. So the, the group that we're talking about, some of us, is an activist group. And the word activist means a person, or it could be a group, who campaigns to bring about political or social change. So do we have any activists here among us? This is an activist the group that we're talking about. They're trying to make a change in the world. Okay. The next word that I thought was quite an interesting word is the word redundant. It's a great word. Redundant. And redundant means not um, or no longer needed or useful. It's, it's not useful anymore. It's superfluous, which is another wonderful word that I love. Superfluous. So there's two words for you in one, redundant and superfluous. Now the word redundant is often used when talking about employment. If you are in a job and the company makes some changes and feels like your job is no longer needed, perhaps you make cars and you, you do th things by hand and then they decide to use robots to do your job. Your job is no longer necessary. You're no longer needed. So you are made redundant. Lots of people, unfortunately, are made redundant as industries progress. Has anyone here ever been made redundant? I hope not. And if you have been made redundant, I hope that you are able to find another job quite quickly. So the word redundant, a good one to remember. And superfluous is just a fun one. I love it. I, I use it actually quite a lot. Okay, so let's go back to those notes. What else do we have? We have petition. You may not have come across this word before, but a petition is a formal written request, typically one that's been signed by many people, appealing to authority in respect of a particular cause. So often people will sign petitions. I see them going around on Facebook all the time. Please sign this petition. It's usually for a cause, a good cause normally. Um, maybe they're trying to stop the closure of something. In this case, they're trying to stop the use of plastic straws and they're asking the government to ban plastic straws. So they've sent around a petition. They want lots of people to sign it to say they support it. And then the petition will be sent to the authority, the government, whoever's in charge to say, look, lots of people want this to happen. You must consider it. Okay, so then we have the word backlash and that's the last one before we go on to the next article. The word backlash you may not have heard before, but it's often used, especially in the news, and it means a strong negative reaction by a large number of people, especially to a social or political um, development. So if you are not happy about something, perhaps you live in the countryside, you have beautiful rolling hills, lots of trees, lots of wildlife, and then I come along with my builders, my bulldozers and my diggers, and I say, I'm going to build a huge airport right here. I'm going to cover everything in concrete. We're going to knock down um, all the trees. We're going to cut down all the trees and build and it will be very different. You might be very upset about that. In fact, everyone in the area will probably be very upset about it. So there will be a negative reaction, which we refer to as a backlash. There will be a huge backlash, okay? So um, let me know if any of these words are completely new to you. Um, obviously, I'm just making assumptions as to what you may not be familiar with, but do let me know which ones you are unfamiliar with. So we have backlash, petition, redundant and activist. Now we're going to read this again, but this time we're going to do it together. So what's going to happen is I'm going to read one line um, and then I'm going to say your turn and you read it. Okay. <clears throat> I want you to try and copy the way in which I say it. Um, so I may not go to the end of the sentence, I'll go to the end of what is a natural phrase. All right, are you ready? Let's do this. So me first, then your turn. Here we go. McDonald's shareholders have rejected a proposal. Your turn.
asking the firm to report on its use of plastic straws. The latest part of a campaign pressing the firm to ban the items. Your turn. The idea, which was backed by activist group Some of Us, your turn, won less than 8% of the vote at the company's annual meeting. Your turn. McDonald's had re McDonald's had recommended against the measure, saying it was unnecessary and redundant. Your turn. Some of us said the vote was not surprising. Your turn. Some of us has been pressing McDonald's to end its use of... Let me add that in. Let me go again. Some of us has been pressing McDonald's to end its use of plastic straws. Your turn. Due to the impact on the environment and wildlife... Good. An online petition on the issue has attracted nearly 500,000 signatures. Your turn. The proposal argued that McDonald's could face a consumer backlash on environmental grounds. Your turn. Fantastic. Really good. I hope you're finding this helpful. So, we've learnt how many? Four, four words there. Activist. Redundant. Lots of you are saying you weren't familiar before with redundant. I'm glad I've been able to introduce something to you. Petition and backlash. So now we're moving on to a more political based article. Of course, the big news at the moment is that Donald Trump has cancelled his meeting with Kim Jong un. And this is a big shock to the world because it was going to be a fantastic step forward in the peace process. Um, but obviously, it's all now come to an end. And so we're going to just read a small section from the article. These articles are taken from the BBC website. There is a link down in the description box below if you're interested in reading news from the BBC, where you can find the full articles there as well. But this is just an extract from the end of the article. And again, I've picked out some words for you. So what I'm going to do is attempt to give you a clean reading now. I will then introduce you to the words that I've picked out for you. And then we'll go back and do it together. Okay, fantastic. If you are finding this helpful, guys, then please do let me know in the comments and also give me a thumb up. I'm always trying different things. It's hard for me to know what works for you and what doesn't. So the only way I know is if you're vocal and tell me this does work, this doesn't work. I can take criticism. I just need to know what's helpful. Otherwise, I'm redundant and I don't want to be redundant. I want to help you. So here we go. Let's do this together. So I have Trump abruptly cancels meeting with Kim Jong Un. South Korean President Moon Jae in said he was very perplexed and that it was very regrettable that the summit was not going ahead. He was not informed of the decision before Mr. Trump's announcement, reports say. Reports said. 
It was South Korean officials who first informed the US earlier this year that Mr. Kim was prepared to discuss potential nuclear disarmament. In April, the leaders of both Koreas had an had a historic meeting at the border, promising to end hostilities and work towards the denuclearization of the Korean peninsula. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, Guterres, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, Guterres, I will go with, said the US and North Korea should not give up, saying nerves of steel were required. In the US, Republican Senator Tom Cotton praised President Trump for seeing through Kim Jong-un's fraud, but Democratic Senator Brian Schatz said the move was what happened when amateurs are combined with warmongers. Gosh, so lots of angry talk there. Lots of angry talk indeed. So the vocabulary I've brought out for you are perplexed. I love this word. It's such a great word to say, perplexed. I'm perplexed. And I want you to try and use this word more often. It means confused, basically. So it means completely baffled or very puzzled. I simply say confused. And lots of people say, I'm confused. So in future, try to say, I'm perplexed. It will make you sound very clever. Then we have disarmament. Disarmament. And disarmament is the reduction or the withdrawal of military forces and weapons. So if I have a huge gun and lots of grenades behind me and I'm ready to fight, um, but we're talking about disarmament, then I might agree to disarmament by putting away my gun, selling my grenades or, or destroying my grenades. So I have no, I have no weapons. I have been disarmed. Yes, I mean disarmed. That is disarmament. Okay, so um, disarmament, disarmament and perplexed. We don't pronounce the letter R. Perplexed, perplexed. Beautiful word. Okay, so the next word on the list is hostilities. Comes from hostile. If you are hostile, it means that you are unfriendly or you're opposed to something, you're hostile. I'm sure we've all in our lives experienced hostile behavior. Perhaps you've been hostile towards someone. Sometimes I've been hostile if I felt uncomfortable or um, if I felt defensive, I can be a little hostile. Not often, but sometimes. So we're generally talking about hostilities, hostilities. And just so you can see it written here, hostile behavior, unfriendliness or opposition, hostilities. One that you'll probably see in the news a lot, especially at the moment, is denuclearization. I have to say it very slowly. It's a, it's a bit of a mouthful. Denuclearization. To remove nuclear weapons from a place. It's very simple. To remove nuclear weapons from a place. Denuclearization. Okay. Then the word amateurs, I thought this was quite an interesting word. So an amateur, let me take the S off there. An amateur is a person who engages in something, um, a pursuit, perhaps um, singing or um, uh, golf or motor car racing. We usually use amateur and professionals when we're talking about sports. But an amateur does it on an unpaid basis or perhaps they're untrained. They're non-professionals. So I could say to you, yes, I play squash, but I'm an amateur squash player. I play in the leagues even. I attend competitions, but I'm an amateur. I'm not professional. It's not my job. I don't get paid to do it. I just enjoy it. I'm also an amateur gymnast. Uh, gymnast? Gymnast. <laughs> I always do that. Overcorrect. I'm an amateur gymnast. I enjoy gymnastics. I compete in competitions. I train, but I do don't do it as my job. I don't get paid. Um, I'm an amateur. So what do you do? What hobbies do you have that you could say, I am an amateur what? I'm an amateur painter. I'm an amateur writer. I'm an amateur video maker. I'm an anim, um, amateur singer. So what do you do 
that you enjoy that you don't do for money. Okay, so that's the word amateur and the opposite of amateur is a professional. And then the final word on the list is the word warmonger. Warmonger. I like this word. Obviously, it represents something negative, but it's quite a strong word. And it means a person who encourages or advocates, that means they agree with, aggression towards another country or a group. So it's someone who tries to stir things up and cause trouble, like fight, come on, fight. There's lots of war mongers, aren't there? We can all think of a, a war monger or two in politics. Um, so yes, war mongers. I'll show you it written down just in case you're unsure of the spelling. There we go. War mongers. Okay. So these words, war mongers, amateur, denuclearization, woohoo, mouthful, hostilities, disarmament, and perplexed. Love that word so much. Um, Neelam's asking, is, um, is amateur a negative word? Not at all. Not at all. It can be used in a negative way. So if you're doing something, if you're doing a job, if you're actually being paid for something, perhaps you're a designer and you make packaging for products and you're designing the packaging. And I look at your work and go, oh, you're such an amateur. I'm basically saying you're not very good. You're not very professional. Um, so you can use it as an insult, but a, as a word, as a as an idea, being an amateur is not a bad thing. Many people are amateurs at something. We all have to start as amateurs before we become professionals if you want to take it that far. But yes, absolutely nothing wrong with being an amateur. It's just where people begin or what people do for fun. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back and we're going to read that article again, bearing in mind these words that we've just looked at. We're going to do it together once more. I'll read a sentence. I'll highlight the part I'm going to read. Once I've read it, then you read it. Okay, out loud to practice your speaking. Try to do it in the same way that I've done it. So the same intonation, the same flow. All right, here we go. So... South Korean President Moon Jae-in said he was very perplexed. And that it was very regrettable that the summit was not going ahead. He was not informed of the decision before Mr. Trump's announcement, reports said. Oops. It was South Korean officials who first informed the US earlier this year. that Mr. Kim was prepared to discuss potential nuclear disarmament. In April, the leaders of both Koreas had a historic meeting at the border. promising to end hostilities and work towards the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. UN Secretary, Gen UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said...
The US and North Korea should not give up, saying nerves of steel were required. In the US, Republican Senator Tom Cotton praised President Trump. For seeing through Kim Jong un's fraud. But Democratic Senator Brian Schatz said The move was what happened when amateurs are combined with warmongers. Fantastic. Wonderful, guys. Well, I do hope that you found that helpful. I hope that you were able to read along and that the gap I left for you was just enough. Not too long, but not too short. It is very hard to judge when I can't see or hear any of you. So like I said, do let me know in the comments section below whether or not you found this helpful. If you, if you found some parts of it helpful, but not, not others, then let me know. It's only through your feedback I can improve these live sessions that I do for you. Now, a few little notices. Next Monday, I will not be live. I have notified quite a few of you already, um, but in case you missed it, I won't be doing a live lesson on Monday, but there will be a new video lesson. It's already ready to go and share with you and scheduled for a release midday on Monday. So that's going to be a nice helpful lesson for you. Good for your pronunciation. So look out for that one. And then there'll be a live lesson again next Friday, this time at the slightly later time, the normal time around midday. So I will announce exactly what time to expect me and the subject of the lesson on Facebook and possibly on Twitter and here on YouTube. So make sure that you are subscribed and that you're following me on my social media platforms. There's lots of links in the description box below. Now, if you're really keen to improve your English and you feel you already are at an advanced level, then I do recommend the um, audible book by Stephen Fry, which is Sherlock Holmes. It's very rich in vocabulary. Stephen Fry has a wonderful accent, a very clear um, narration, uh, narrating voice. He's he's fantastic. I, I listen to his version of Sherlock Holmes and I just love him to bits. He also did Harry Potter, um, which if you're not really advanced, then perhaps Harry Potter is a better level for you. Um, if you haven't heard of Audible before, it's um, it's just a place where you can download um, audio books. It's really handy. I think listening to English on a regular basis will really help you. You can get a free trial for 30 days. That's what I did. I now pay for my subscription um, because I love aud audio books. Um, but if you haven't tried it, give it a try. It's a free trial. The link's down in the description box below. And that, um, that hopefully is something you'll find very helpful. Otherwise, do go out to the BBC website, check out um, their news articles. You can watch videos there. Just constantly familiarise yourself with native speakers and just constantly surround yourself in the language. By doing that, without even realising, you'll be picking up more and more vocabulary. You'll be understanding, without realising, you'll be understanding grammar, um, and yes, you'll also pick up the natural flow and pronunciation. So BBC website, I think I'm sure I've li linked it below. Um, Audible is also a good way to go. Um, otherwise guys, it's a bank holiday weekend in the UK. If you're here in the UK, I hope you have a fabulous time, whatever you're doing. I'm going to be going on a few adventures myself. So I'll be sharing those on my other YouTube channel, Anna's Big Adventure. So if you're interested in camping and hiking and all sorts of different things, um, that's the place to be, Anna's Big Adventure. So you can share with me the adventures that you're going on and see what the adventures I'm going on. 
All right, my darlings, I will stay in the chat room, just have a quick chat with you um, via text for the next five, 10 minutes or so. Otherwise, have a lovely time and I will see you live again next Friday. But don't forget the video on Monday. <laughs> okay, so take care. Lots of love from London and bye.